Example 125. A researcher predicts that a low carbohydrate diet will result in a loss of lean muscle mass of 3.5 pounds of muscle per 10 pounds of overall weight loss. A recent study that looked at the different effects of restricting carbohydrate intake on weight loss involved reducing total calorie intake by 600 calories per day while following a diet that had the following macronutrient ratios, 38%, 30%, 32%. This is, in other words, percent carbohydrate to protein to fat. So 38% carbohydrate, 30% protein, 32% fat. 32 overweight men followed the diet for 16 weeks. The average loss of lean mass for every 10 pounds of overall weight loss was 3.3 pounds. The standard deviation for the amount of lean mass lost per 10 pounds of weight loss was 5.1 pounds. Use the p-value method to test the researcher's prediction at the 2% significance level. Okay, so it tells us to use the p-value method to test the researcher's prediction. So it's a hypothesis test, right? And we're going to use the p-value method to do it. So first thing we want to do is come up with a claim. So let's do that first. The claim here is going to be, and it's based here on what they say, the researcher's prediction, right? So what was his prediction? He predicted that a low carbohydrate diet will result in a loss of lean muscle mass of 3.5 pounds of muscle per 10 pounds of overall weight loss. So he's saying the average loss for every 10 pounds of weight lost in the diet is equal to 3.5. So this is the average loss of lean muscle mass for every 10 pounds lost due to the diet. And he's saying it should be equal to that. So the claim is the mean is equal to 3.5. Then from there, we're going to have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign, or it'll have a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to. So it always has some kind of an equal sign. So because of the fact that the claim has an equal sign, HO will be the same as the claim in this example. So the HO is the mean is equal to 3.5. So what would the alternative be? Well, it would have to be the opposite, right? What's the opposite of equal to? Not equal to. So either this researcher is right or he's not right. Okay, so let's go on to the next step of the problem, which is to collect the data for the problem. So let's just copy down the numbers they gave us because those are going to be important. So we'll have n equals x bar equals standard deviation equals and alpha for the problem. Now the n in the problem, it says that 32 overweight men were looked at, right? 32 overweight men who followed the diet. It says that their average loss of lean mass was 3.1 or 3.3 pounds, pardon me, so 3.3 pounds. It says the standard deviation um, was a total of 5.1 pounds, 5.1 pounds. And then finally, alpha, it says we should use a 2% significance level, so 0 0.02. All right, so there's our data for the problem. Let's take that data now, and we're going to use it in the test stat formula. So we're going to say, z equals 2. Why do I choose z? Because my n is large, it's over 30, right? So x bar minus mu sub 0 uh, sigma over the square root of n. So plugging those numbers in, we get 3.3 .3 minus the value from the null hypothesis, which is 3.5, divided by the standard deviation, which we can see is 5.1, over the square root of 32. Let's see what that gives us in our calculator. So we'll have parentheses 3.3 .3 minus 3.5, close it up, divide by open parentheses 5.1, divided by the square root of 32. Close that parenthesis up and hit enter and we get minus 0.22, so approximately negative 0.22. It's a very small test stat, so it's a, a very, uh, I shouldn't say small, it's a decimal number that's close to zero is what I mean to say. So small in terms of absolute terms, it's pretty close to zero. Okay, from there what we want to do is to look that number up on our z chart, but let's do our drawing first to see why we're doing that. It's the p-value method of hypothesis testing, so the rule here is not to draw a rejection region. That's not going to be our goal. The idea instead is going to be to draw a bell curve, look at the alternative hypothesis to determine what kind of test we're conducting. With a not equal to symbol, it's a two-tailed test. And for a two-tailed test, the way to calculate the p-value is to look at your test stat, 
plot it on the curve where it belongs. So since zero is at the center, a negative 0.22 would just be a little to the left of that, right? And once you have that on your drawing, you're going to draw a line. And the rule for a two-tailed test, which is what we're dealing with because of the not equal to, for a two-tailed test, you find the tail area. So this would be the tail, right? The skinny tail, in this case, is to the left. We find that tail area, but because it's a two-tailed test, we must double the answers that we get. So whatever answer we get for this area here, we're going to do double it. So the p-value will equal twice the area here. So the p-value is equal to two times the area. So two times the area. All right, so let's try to figure out what the area is. We're going to go look up 0.22 on our z chart and get the area from here to the center, and then we'll do 0.5 minus that area to figure out the area for the tail. Once we have that answer, we'll double it, and that will be our p-value. Okay, so now we're looking up 0.22 on the z chart. That's 0.2. 2, right? So 0 0.22 gives us 0 0.0871 as our value. So again, 0 0.22 is 0 0.0871. Okay, so we found the answer 0 0.0871. Remember, that's from here to here. That's not the area we wanted. So what we have to do next is to then take that area and subtract it from 0.5. So 0.5 minus 0 0.0871. Once we do that, we have the result for this tail, 0.4129. But keep in mind that that is, oops, 0.4129. Keep in mind that's just the area for the tail. We need to double it to get our p-value though, right? Because it's a two-tailed test. So don't forget when this is not equal to, you must double that answer. So times two produces the answer 0.8258. So the p-value here is equal to 0.8258. That is a really large p-value. All right, from there, what we're going to do is to take that p-value and compare it against alpha to see what our decision is. So we're going to say here that since the p-value is large, so since it is large, we do not reject the null. We do not reject the null since the p-value is large. So what do we mean by large? We mean essentially that, hey, p, which is equal, or the p-value, sorry, which is equal to 0.8258 is greater than 0 0.02, which is alpha. And because that's true, we're going to say whenever the p-value is larger than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. That means that we do not support the alternative hypothesis. So this is sort of our initial conclusion again, right? So we do not reject the null and we do not support the alternative. Now we have to figure out how we should word our answer. We're going to look at the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis and ask which one is the same as our claim. And the answer is the claim here is the same as the null hypothesis. And because of that, we should word our answer with the statement that related to the null hypothesis. So we're going to say this then. Do not reject the claim. So replace HO with the claim. So we should not reject the claim. So we're going to say the sample data, the sample data does not allow us, does not allow rejection of the claim. Now remember, in everyday terms, what this means. It means that this researcher who said that the lean muscle loss would be, or the lean mass loss, pardon me, would be 3.5 pounds for every 10 pounds of weight loss on the diet, he was basically right because the sample mean came in very close to his number. So in other words, this data isn't strong enough to say that he's wrong. It's not exactly his number, but it's close enough that we can't say that he's wrong. This could have happened just by random statistical fluctuation, right? Sample data is always going to be a little different than population data, and so it could just be that this sample of 32 patients is just a little less lean mass loss in their case, but it's not far enough away from 3.5 for us to conclude that the researcher is wrong. So we're going to say the sample data does not allow rejection of the claim.